Wake Forest. Give you a special little one-hour pregame for the roadie against Wake, where hopefully Florida State is uh, buttoned up and ready to play and uh, goes out there and takes care of business, one would think. One would think uh, that that is exactly what's going to happen. So that's 11 a.m. Tom just posted it right there. Johnny on the spot. 11 a.m. to 12. War chant pregame. Post game starts 10 to 15 minutes after the conclusion of this football game with Gene and Tom. Tom pulling the double duty as usual. And uh, we thank Deluna Coffee for that one. Tip of the cap. Good stuff. I'm drinking Deluna Coffee this morning. I had that uh, this morning. I had a full bag that I ground the beans. was ready to roll. All right. Fresh this morning. Good stuff. Tasty, tasty, tasty as always. Good job, Ed. You and your crew. Uh, I would also say that... Um, I feel good. I feel good that Florida State's defense is going to dominate the day. I think we're going to have a hodgepodge from the offense. I, I like them to do enough, certainly, to win comfortably. I think the defense is going to play well. The more I look at Wake, the more I really don't know how they're going to move the ball. The other thing is, we don't know who's playing quarterback for them. You asked me, I think, yesterday, the day before, and we we don't know. We, we, we've been told that uh, Griffiths was – Maybe going to be back. I know yeah. he came back to practice early in the week. It's their best option by far. Oh, Griffith's it's not plays. even close. It's not even close. And even when he does, not great, but he does run their offense. He runs yeah. their offense. So uh, I suppose that that's what you'll be looking for tomorrow as uh, you sit down. Who's playing? I mean, it's always good to know. That's true of this game big time. I'll just tell you that right now. Across the board, you don't know if Wake's starting quarterback is going to play or not. Florida State probably has some guys out. We don't know specifically which ones. Not really allowed to say anyhow, but, you know, they've had a collection of guys that have been dinged. And so you just don't know how many of them are going to hold out, how many of them are good to go. Generally speaking, coaches as well as players. Now, this is especially true in the National Football League uh, where you can lose to anybody because they're all pros. But if a guy passes the medical during the week and is cleared to play, guys want to play. You know, there's a misnomer amongst fans, always has been, like, oh, well, you know, he's got a bit of a strain, don't play him. Most of the time, that's not true. Now, college, it happens more than pros. College, if you've got a team that you're favored to beat by 40, you can say, we'll give it another week. You don't see 40-point spreads in the league. <laughs> so that's why you don't get it. But most people side with playing. You only have so many of these. You never got to this place, to this level, to this, you know, elite level if you're at Florida State by sitting out a lot. You got out there because you wanted to play and you played well, and if you could, you did, period. Now, there are exceptions to the rule. If you've got concussion symptoms, you're not going to be allowed to play, period, even if you're standing there feeling fine. If you didn't pass that 20-plus point uh, inspection, for lack of a better term, almost like it's a car, then you don't, you don't get to play. If it's a hamstring, they're very careful about hamstrings. Always should be. These are finely tuned athletes that are capable of tweaking that sucker in a second because they're so explosive. Hamstrings, but soreness, you know, you know, like oh, my ankle's sore. Tape it up. Let's go. Let's play ball. So if these guys that are on the edge have something relatively minor, they're going to want to play. This is a long-winded way of saying. Tomorrow, check in on the pregame show with Tom and myself, and we'll get the answer from Ira and Corey, who are there live and from Winston-Salem, and find out who's out there warming up, who's dressed, because uh, this could be a weird game. This could be a weird game where you're missing two guys from this group, another guy from this group, and another guy from that group, but it's also a game where if that's the case, boy, do you get a lot of opportunity for guys that are talented that haven't been able to see the field as much. Yeah, it's hard to, for example, we look at the Duke game last week, and it was easy to talk about the game plan and what we think Florida State should do, what we think Duke should do defensively, because we knew on Florida State's side of the ball, when we have the ball, that the following players were going to be available. X, Y, Z, Johnny Wilson being included in that. You know, Bless Harris was said to be available early in the week last week. So you know that you've got quite a, a high amount of your players and your projected starters back in the fold for tomorrow's purposes, because it is kind of nebulous here. It's hard to envision exactly what Florida state needs to do on offense. Like for example, if you said, what are the offensive keys? Well, I'd like to know who is involved first. Is Johnny going to be available? Probably. I mean, maybe probably not, but yeah, I'm going to doubt it. The offensive line that matters greatly here. And, and Florida state has been, in good position with eight guys that they feel good about, but you've had to lean on a different five every week. 
a different fight every week. Every effing week. I'm tired of it. I I'm, bring it up all the time, much to people's chagrin, but they haven't had the starting five all year long. It's a good thing you have the depth. You've leaned on it, but yeah. it's never the same five. Yeah. Have we been able to build up chemistry with a starting five this year? No. No, we haven't. And different groups of five have different strengths. Therefore, you would call different things. Yeah. Offensive. Changes the so game plan, period. It's yeah. just very hard to, to diagnose the game. You can see what I'm going through right now for the red zone in hour two. What the hell questions am I going to ask? I don't know who's playing. Well, I think you got to ask big picture questions. I think a lot of us are at this juncture of the season. You're just asking the bigger picture stuff. We're in the second half. It's all from here out right before you. Your opportunity exists week to week to stamp uh, another, uh, another like for me, emphatic uh, yes in the column of you're a playoff team. And I think, uh, you know, you go and win this game comfortably and then you let ever others argue about, you know, who should be in and who shouldn't. You just keep winning and not really worry yourself about the perception of Florida State. Because if you win out, you're in. You are in. Florida State goes undefeated in the regular season and wins the ACC title. They're going to the college football playoff. End of story. They are. Now, you know, you, you got it's easier said than done. You got to go do it. Uh, but this is one of those games that you don't anticipate being a stumbling block. I think we have scars. I think we have, you know, some tough memories to get past uh, where we were heavy favorites against this team off and on over the years. And this has been to some degree, oddly, a kind of a house of horrors in the way that NC State has been when we're on the road. Uh, but this is not vintage Wake. This isn't the greater version of Wake. This is a bad version of Wake. They are, they are well coached. They're always going to be well coached as long as Dave Clawson's there but they don't really have the manpower, especially not on offense, especially not on offense. Yeah, they've got one good receiver, a really good running back, but not much of an offensive line to speak of. And then on defense, they're quick, they're well-coached, and they tackle well. They tackle very well. In that yeah, but, that's the side of the ball where they have to make hay. But you're watching, I mean, so Clemson's the best opponent that they've played so far, but you watch a game like that or even a pit game, and if the quarterback is alert enough, there are wide open spaces to throw the football to routinely. You know, it's just they're betting that you are not going to be able to process the information to find the breakdowns. And so well, if it is, can. if it is a day in which we pass, and, and that was one of the studies I did this week was we flipped from a balance slash run first team to a pass first team. This need year. to need to it's 55. The first three quarters of the game were about 55 plus percent in terms of pass to run. Hey, can Mike Norvell call Tampa Bay? and talk a little bit about how much it means to throw on neutral downs. You understand the modern game of football, this is proven by stats. This is not an opinion. The modern game of football is a more efficient game when you throw to run. That's period. Throw on neutral downs. Stop running on neutral downs. I can't watch us anymore. This is asinine. That's an aside. But throw on neutral downs. It is far more efficient. Didn't you like the urgency that the offense played oh, with down Jesus. 14 points in the fourth quarter? And still calling runs on first and second down. I, I was hoping. At, at one point, I was daring to dream that we would score with under 10 seconds to go to make it a one-score game. Because it was on that pace. Well, they did. I it mean, would have been. I mean, you no, got no, it was two and change. But I was hoping we'd get inside the two-minute warning and it would just be even more laborious. And it's like 17 seconds to go. Here comes the onside kick. Because it looked like we were going to run a you know, 22-play nine and a half minute drive oh yeah but i think it's by the way there's it's a talking point i mean they lost 24 to 18 and they went for two on the final score now why does that matter if you're a gambler it matters very very oh, much yeah. and what's going on right now is is the analytics have gotten to the league now where they this is interesting these guys have people like your wife run the numbers and say Okay, you're going to have to trust me on this. We extrapolate this out over millions of times, okay? You're better off going for two here right now and kicking the extra point to win when you get the ball back if, in fact, you do get the ball back with a chance to win as opposed to going for two when you score last for the potential game tying or go-ahead play. Now, there are a lot of reasons for that, and they're boring. But they, if you look at that now, what that means is if you're a teaser guy, and I am. I am huge on playing teasers. Two team, three team, four team, five team teasers. Love them. You can make a lot of money that way if you know how to do it. You're going to start teasing through weird numbers. You're going to start teasing through six yep, yep, and yep. through eight. Correct. Five and a half is now a big number. And it it's was never, it was an immaterial was. number. It yeah, changes yeah. how you bet the sport. 
bunch of teams in the last two weeks have done this, have gone for two instead of 24-17, it's 24-18, to and you're like, son of a bitch, I'm going to lose this bet. And I have no, why are you going for two with 10 seconds to play in a seven-point game, you ass? Yeah, I mean, or an eight-point game, that's nuts. It it kind of is. In this case, though, I don't need anybody with a PhD in data, as, no. as I have in my household, right? to tell me that... um Let's win it in as few possessions as possible. Correct. Because we suck and we're they're better be- than we are. Right, right. By the so way, they're if, not real good right now either. I, I'm but a Bills if, fan. I don't feel great about that one. So you had three timeouts. You're on the other side of the two-minute warning. Mm-hmm. So they've got to achieve a couple first downs to run out the clock. So if by some non-miracle, because our defense is okay. Pretty good. If we can get them off the field, I need to win it now. We go to overtime. Oh, I'm not winning uh, yeah, this no. football game. Correct. I got no chance. You play to win the game, especially when you're an underdog yeah. on the road. Just go get it. Now, the other argument is, why don't you just kick the extra point and same situation. It's just that you got a winner take all play at the very end of the game. Why not just do that then? Because they say, well, there's a reason for that. The though, detriment I- is now you're playing for the tie. Yeah, if you if you do not succeed, because everybody assumes you're going to succeed when you go for two. How about when you fail? Yeah. Now you're on your last legs playing for a tie with with little to no time on. the Yeah. Clock. And there, I've actually looked this up. There is a reason that you don't. Now, it's convoluted as hell, but there is a reason. And I've seen these stats guys do. Hey, listen, there's no more stats guy than Mike. Our guy right here at Florida State is oh, beholden beyond reason to some extent occasionally. Mm. Like, circumstances matter not. It is a chart. It is clearly a chart. He hits the B button when Ask Madden says punt. He's like, get out of here. Get the hell up out of here with punt. Just shut up, nonsense. You shut up. Uh, As a note, Tom, I keep noting this game to game just for you, just because I know you like this. The Bucs are 4 of 15 on third down yesterday. They ran the ball on first and second down over and over again, despite – uh, you know, you have a, it's crazy. This, they run the ball. Their success rate last night was 30%. Yeah. All right. I understand going in the game, wanting to run the ball because the bills have a terrible run defense, but man, we couldn't run the ball against that defense. And we're not good at running the ball. Haven't been good at running the ball all year. And you can't run against that defense. You really got to stop running the ball on first yeah, down. They had some success in the first half, but my favorite was, I, it was the fourth quarter. It wasn't the drive that took forever, I don't think. But it's first down, pinned back in our own territory, as always. And there's a false start, I believe, on the right guard. But it, it's first and 10. We were calling a run, and Buffalo had called an all-out run blitz. <laughs> yeah. And they had run the play, kind of, and the whistles were blowing, and they stopped the guys in motion. Buffalo sends the house, and it would have been a loss of five and perhaps an impaled Rashad White yeah, well, on the ground. Rashad's used to it. Um, this and I'm is- sure in that moment they're going – can we call? Look at this. They're teeing off. Fellas. They know our plays. At some point, Canales, we've got to run something other than this on first down. I beg of you. We're not going anywhere this year. Open it up. You do have receivers. Let her fly. Let's go. Maybe he's got a deal to be the next head coach after uh, they oh, fire the current one yeah. if we lose enough games. Maybe there's an inside now, job this going is, on This there. ended up being what we thought it would be. This is I, I got some player props for you later today, guys. Ooh. You guys asked about it. I got some player props. Did a little research. Last night and this morning, and uh, feel pretty good about a couple of these. We'll throw, as always, when you do player props, that are you're just sprinkling some pizza money here. Player props aren't easy, although I make them look easy. They're not, and you always just want to sprinkle a little. But are we talking like uh, it's already ready at the counter when you walk into the pizza shop kind of money, or quality ingredients with multiple toppings on a pizza kind of quality money? Quality ingredients. Okay, always. Right, you got to make right, it worth your while. That's a big difference. Yeah, you got to you know? make it worth your while. Okay. I just sent one off before the show. Let me pull up what I sent off here. I'll give you one before we go to break. This is honesty. Uh, yeah, this Why is. Why don't you share the phone number you sent uh, it to? I'm not doing that. Not doing that. All right, I'm going to take Christian Kirk over 54 yards receiving. Okay. There you go. Come on, Christian Kirk. Keep it rolling, baby. Yeah, man coverage. You should burn this man coverage all day, Consider Christian Kirk. Consider the, the whistle wetted. <laughs> Jeff Cambridge on 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chant TV. Hey, no fans. Our partner, ISF Inc., is a national management and IT consulting firm located right here in Tallahassee, Florida, solving the future for state governments through strategy, process, and technology. As a trusted advisor for state governments, ISF knows the importance of defining a clear and detailed strategy. Our friends at ISF can help your organization create a strategy that sets you on a path to success. ISF, your vision plus our expertise brings your brilliant ideas to life. Visit ISF.com to learn more. ISF, solving the future. 
Widden Glass has been taking care of business since 1945. When you call Widden Glass, you're dealing with experienced, reliable professionals who offer only the best. Like Widden's top-of-the-line bath enclosures that provide style and luxury at an affordable price. Eye-catching storefronts are a specialty at Widden Glass. We'll help you design it and install it. Witten Glass, the first name in glass replacement. Call 222-5781. Someone who thought texting was a better idea than stopping for a traffic light slams into your rear bumper. Now your back is injured and you've got to be at work and rehab all without a car. I'm Dana Brooks of Basic Brooks Law Offices, and we hear stories like this every day. You shouldn't pay for someone else's mistake. Call us at 850-777-7777 and we'll make sure you come back stronger. Excellence defines us. So we'll never let orthopedic pain and injury define you. TOC is a physician-led team of fellowship-trained specialists providing the highest level of orthopedic care in the region. With 12 centers of excellence, and TOC Now Urgent Care Clinics, our patients access affordable expert care fast. TOC, only experts. Schedule an appointment at teamtoc.com. Tallahassee's biggest, baddest Halloween fashion costume contest is in the Brass Tap in Midtown tomorrow night. And no cover charge. Win a costume contest where the first place gets 500 bucks cash. Registration begins at 8. Free to enter. Bring your entourage to cheer you on. Tons of spooky specialty cocktails to choose from. Like margaritas, zombie teenies, and more. Like DJ spinning from 9 p.m. to 1 a.m. The 10th annual biggest, baddest Halloween bash at the Brass Tap in Midtown. With a $500 grand prize for the best costume tomorrow night. There's no doubt that buying a home can feel overwhelming, especially if it's your first home. You're worried about location, school zones, square footage, inspections, insurance, loan approvals, interest rates, and of course, the price. Buying a home can be the most significant investment you've ever made. But there's good news. You have our friends at Legendary Home Loans, and they're on your side and in your corner. They're going to go to bat for you. Shannon Young from Legendary Home Loans can help first-time home buyers get up to $25,000 for your down payment. For first responders, veterans, teachers, military, and healthcare workers, and that's not all, Shannon is an expert navigator of the home loan terrain, and you can trust that he's going to get you the most competitive interest rates and guide you through the process every step of the way. Plus, Shannon will also get your closing costs reduced. It's the Hometown Heroes Program at Legendary Home Loans. Give them a call today, 844-FSU-LOAN. That's 844-FSU-LOAN. Or go to FSUHomeLoans.com and ask for Shannon Young. NMLS number 227146. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. Welcome back to the Jeff Cameron Show, sponsored by Legendary Home Loans, a mortgage experience designed around speed, simplicity, and customer service. Before you buy your next home, contact our friend Shannon Young with Legendary Home Loans. Visit FSUHomeLoans.com, FSUHomeLoans.com. Uh, especially in games in which Florida state is a heavy favorite. It's just this undying quest, right? This uh, desperate quest to look the part and you get opportunities like this. You hope certainly that uh, you're able to take advantage of them. I will say this, and you probably enjoyed this because it's not always that um, at least under the umbrella of the Connolly statistics, SP plus, et cetera, that Florida State is well thought of, but in this case, they are. Um, Take a look. The SP plus strength of schedule rankings for the unbeatens this week. 
So Liberty's unbeaten. They have the 133rd rated schedule. Who cares? You're not in the conversation. Okay. Who cares about Liberty? Air Force. Who are you? Has the 130th rated schedule, and they are too undefeated. James Madison, 114th. Michigan, 110th. Georgia, in the mighty SEC, 93rd. Washington, 50th. Oklahoma, 40th. Ohio State, 28th. Florida State, 23rd, the highest ranked schedule. And FSU has beaten three current top 30 SP plus opponents. And Ohio State's the only other team that's beaten more than one. And so, you know, if you think about Michigan, for example, they've beaten zero. Not a single team that's anywhere close to that top 30. So you would not argue with Florida State's credentials at this point. People might. They would choose to do so. And then you would choose to get angry about it. Not you, Tom, but people in general. Uh, and then, you know, get, get, you know, get their frustrations up and scream at the TV. Don't do that. Just know that those are the numbers and that's where you're at. Don't worry about it. Keep on winning. Keep improving those credentials. Florida State's incredibly resilient and we'll have more opportunities to add to the flair of that schedule. Now it is true. Florida State has also had to rely on the most amount of, you know, if you want to call it late fury, fine. You can, that they've had to do that more than most teams that are in this discussion. But here's the deal with Florida State is at this point, you have back-to-back games, I think, where if you're right and you play well, you can really put a number up. Again, it's a little trickier to say that about this game tomorrow just because I'm not sure who's playing. I would tell you that if Florida State had every one of its starters, or at least the vast majority, I would pick Florida State to win this game by 40. I don't think Wake is going to move the ball and that offense is going to put their defense in a terrible position. And we've seen what happens to teams when they do that. Syracuse, obviously, even Duke a week ago, is in the game, is fighting their ass off, is doing everything in their power, but their offense begins to just completely stall out and their defense gets exhausted. And basically, as we've said all week long, not only does Florida State go on to win the game comfortably, they cover easily. And they have an opportunity. If that's five more minutes on the clock, you're scoring in the 40s. You're going to blow that. They can't. They, they couldn't get a stop at the end. Duke was not going to stop Florida State in the next however many possessions, okay? And I think Wake is in a similar position this week, only they're not as talented as Duke. So they're going to be in a situation where maybe their defense keeps them around. And that's especially true because the atmosphere is terrible. Rather than being in Doak at night with an electric atmosphere and a pumped-up crowd and and, and, and team taking the field, you're going to be on the road in a sterile environment with a team that has very few aspirations remaining on the season. And so you do wonder, okay, it's a little bit different. You got to provide your own energy. Now, if you factor in that, let's say Johnny Wilson doesn't play, it doesn't seem like he's going to, but let's say he doesn't play. Right. And you've got, let's say you got a couple offensive linemen out. Let's say you got another receiver or two out. Okay. How, in rhythm are you going to be early on? How quickly are you going to get out the gates, right? That's how you wonder about it. That's the only aspect of this game. That is the only angle that you would take if you were going to bet on Wake. Like if you put yourself on the other side of the bet, sometimes I like to do that. And I say, how would I do it? Well, how I would do it is we're a little bit off kilter because we don't have our starters out there. Mental fog after airing it out versus Duke and finishing strong. Beat up a little bit from an injury standpoint in a sorry environment against a well-coached defense. And the next thing you know, it's relatively close going into the second half. That's how you make the argument against the cover. That's how you make the argument uh, for Wake to be in the game in the second half. But if you're going to argue the other side and have Florida State covering easily, it's a pretty straightforward approach. And that is, I'm just not sure how Wake's going to move the ball. Their offense has been up and down. They've got question marks at quarterback. They've had an injury to an offensive lineman. They don't have dynamic play uh, out on the edges. So I just don't see where it's going to happen for them in that way. And that's why it's easier to make the other argument. Lee Sterling joins us now. Paramount Sports, as always. Lee, how are you, brother? Good to talk to you. I'm good. I'm good. Back from Chicago. and Nice. Uh... Yeah. How'd beautiful. she do? How'd she do? Well, uh, killed it as always. Video. Good enough to where they want her back again and maybe a few times every year now. Awesome. Yeah. She's going to have a professional then, career singing the anthem, just going stadium to stadium. 
That's what I told you. You know, there's the wedding singer. Now you're the national anthem singer. <laughs> hey, it's not an easy song to sing. So when they find somebody that can do it and do it well, boom, she's got it. It's a kind of industry. Make it happen. <laughs> I, I agree. So it also helps out. Uh, that they won for the first time 11 times. Yeah, that's it's nice. So. Yeah, there you go. Uh, <laughs> yeah. All right, so let's go. Let's get to the games. Uh, no reason to think Virginia, despite this massive upset they just pulled against North Carolina, will even be in the game against Miami, right? This is a mismatch, although I'll stop with the rolling and talking about how lopsided it is. Once I get the answer, is Tyler Van Dyke going to play? I think there's a good chance he played. And, and, and that raises another question. Don't you think that college football needs to go along the same lines as the NFL and start having – NFL has three times a week. You've got to report the injuries at least twice. Don't you think that's fair? Well, here's why, Lee, and I've said this for, for a couple of years now. If you're going to take the advertising dollars, then you can't right. play the moral high ground. And there are advertising dollars being made yep. by college football. So at this point, if you're going to allow yep. DraftKings to advertise and, 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 and FanDuel and all the rest yep. – well, then you can't be a hypocrite. You've got to provide the people who you are asking to, you know, use these services and make these wagers. You got to give them information. You hit it right on the tee. You couldn't have said it better. And how about like even like Marshall last Thursday night? A slew of guys didn't play. Nothing. Nothing showed up. So I think there needs to be a change by next year. I think Virginia played hard, and you knew they were going to have one game. I mean, they're bad. They're not that, that bad. But, uh, you know, looking back now, they've only beaten William and Mary, but the loss to James Madison doesn't seem so bad. Right. <laughs> right. Maryland's not terrible. You know, the only team that they lost to that's bad is Boston College that was on the road, and they caught North Carolina at the perfect time. North Carolina, all they need to do is run the football and, and run it like 45, 50 times, and they win that game. They just didn't stick – to the game plan, and Virginia had a good game plan. They they were using the tight, uh, tight end, the H back. Malik Washington is not a, not a bad receiver at all. I, I don't know how he did nothing uh, for four years at Northwestern. Little kid number four, Tony Muskets. Okay, I do think TVD will play. I don't think Miami's going to cover nineteen and a half unless they get a bunch of turnovers here. I think Miami wins something like thirty one fifteen. All right, 31-15. Georgia, Florida, everybody loves this game. No Brock Bowers. 14 and a half seems big. Then again, I don't know how Florida's going to score. Give me the number that you like here. So if Brock Bowers plays, I, I'd lay 20 points, 20 and a half. Yeah, I think he's that important. Would you agree that he and and Marvin Harrison, two best players in college football? Uh, yes, uh, th- th- that's uh, – that's compelling. Yeah, I would go along with that. I, I could maybe okay. name another two guys that I love, but you're right. That's fair. Yeah. Okay. I think this year, the way that they played, I mean, there's some other guys that might get drafted above them. Right. But well, that's just I because mean, Brock's a tight end, right? No, I got it. Yeah. 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 I mean, he is, he is so good. He's almost unguardable. 41 catches for over 550 yards. Next best receiver is Dominic Lovett. 18 catches here. I think it's going to force some drastic changes in their offense here. And Georgia, if you want to lay a couple touchdowns here, uh, you got to move pretty quick. Their bottom quarter in the country and pace of play. Both defenses semi rested here. Georgia's one and six against spread record. Kind of tells you that they've been overvalued and they haven't also played up to their potential. I have them winning 28 uh, 20, but. I think 14 and a half is a little too much. FSU's land 20 and a half on the road against Wake Forest. This bet is somewhat uh, kind of a difficult one to get a handle on just because we don't know if Wake, who, we don't know who's starting at quarterback for Wake. If right. Griffiths starts, then obviously he's a kid who can at least run their offense. They've had three different quarterbacks this year. So I'm just telling my listeners, I don't know what to do with the game. Yeah. I like Florida State to win it comfortably, but it's a weird game to get a handle on. They're giving the 20 and a half. What do you say? Well, let's look at the last time. Florida State had a little bit of a scare against Boston College. The next game, they came out and played well and took care of business. Last week, well, I mean, you talk about coaching blunders. It, there was, would you say Mike Elko was, if not the biggest blunder, number two? For which which decision? 
going for it on fourth down. You wouldn't. Have, you did. I think he knew they couldn't get stops the rest of the way. I really do. The way maybe, that game maybe, was going, maybe. Yeah, maybe, I think he did, Lee. I think he knew he wasn't okay. going to get a stop. Okay. Because look what happens right after. They they don't get it. I understand you can say the wind's out of the sails, but they give up a 96-yard drive, and then they give up subsequent touchdown drives. I think he knew they were gassed. Oh, I, I agree he knew they were gassed, but I still would have kicked it. Because uh, if you don't, let's say you somehow get a stop, then all you need is a field goal to win the game. So I thought it was a mistake. Uh, also, Josh Heupel, I mean, you, you're up by six points third quarter and you go for it on your 38 yard line. <laughs> I mean, someone was telling me one time he might end up getting Nick Saban's job. I'm like, are you on drugs? No chance. Yeah. No <laughs> chance. That's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, there's a better chance that he's coaching back in central Florida. <laughs> um, so back to this game, I think they're going to come out. It's not so much Wake Forest just doesn't have the reinforcements. They don't have the defense here. They don't have the big play potential. I think Florida State uh, houses them here, 51-13. 51, wow. Miami yep. minus uh, nine and a half against New England, a Patriots team that was left for dead but rose up, somehow beat Buffalo. Miami, got to get back on track. You like the nine and a half here to give or no? I think they're just going to look to survive and make it to, to Germany and, and play Kansas City. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, they've only, they haven't scored close to 30 points in any of the last three games against New England. Belichick always does well against – you know, and 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 the division opponents, game. especially, yeah. He knows he knows the opponent here. Mac Jones starting to get used to the offense with Bill O'Brien, so playing a little bit better here. I, I think Miami, without uh, the whole left side of their offensive line, uh, I think they hold on and win this game, twenty-seven twenty-four. Jacksonville and Pittsburgh's an intriguing game. I've looked to bet Jacksonville most of the week. I just yep. I'm having a hard time. It's just tough betting against Pittsburgh at home all the time. But anyhow, how do you see it? Do it. Bet it. (laughs) Okay, good. Um, (laughs) Get it at three. Here's why. Pittsburgh needs defensive either scores or takeaways in their opponent's uh, side of the field to have a chance. And I'm talking about two or more. Their offensive line, two years ago, worse than football. Last year, bottom third. I thought they were going to make some improvements this year. Hasn't been the case here. So, uh, they got problems there and just don't think that uh, they're going to be able to keep up with Jacksonville. Here's an interesting stat. Uh, Jacksonville actually has more takeaways, 16 in seven games, leads the NFL, and the receivers number three in yards after catch behind Miami and Kansas City here, Jacksonville 28-20. Free play of the day, a good NC State defense, a terrible offense against a Clemson team that is reeling. It's beautiful to watch Dabo struggle. Clemson minus 10, how do folks get it? <laughs> Who were you rooting for last week, Clemson or Miami? I've never rooted for Miami per se, uh, but it didn't pain me to see them win and to see the disgruntled and the faraway look on Dabo's face when his quarterback goes rogue on the one for not the first time. (laughs) Uh, It's nuts, right? That's a weird game. With a backup quarterback, Miami wins. That's nuts. Yeah. um, I told my wife that I said, this is what the way Jeff, exactly the way you described it, is going (laughs) to. Yeah. 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 This was stolen in this game. Uh, I think I have a real strong opinion on this game tonight. You want to get this game for Saturday, uh, Clemson, NC State, be one of the first five callers. I'll give it to you for free. 800-400-9741. First five callers get Clemson, NC State on me. 800-400-9741. And Jeff, this is one of those rare two-week periods where all four major sports are going on. And sometimes we'll sell, I think we've done it maybe three or four times before, a one-day all-excess pass during the week. So we've got football going on. I have a college football selection tonight. I have a World Series play. Yep, that's going on for the next two weeks. NBA started this week. So football, we're 61-38. and 38. Uh, Baseball, five wins more than losses in the playoffs. Basketball, 2-0 and to start the year. And hockey, already up six wins more than losses in just two and a half weeks of action. Seven total plays, not 77 or 97, what we normally charge. Seven dollars that's right seventeen dollars for seven selections tonight all four sports just one place paramountsports.com love it be good lee have a great weekend man okay. thanks chef yep appreciate it uh in in the interest of transparency i went uh transparency if i could speak i uh went one and one last night in my wagers uh i had the over on tyrese maxi 22 points he scored 32 that was easy uh thought i was all set and then i lost on uh 
the wild over in the first period of an NHL bet. I lost by a half goal. First period over. Yeah, first period. I love the first period overs. Uh, NHL is easy right now with first period overs. You can make a ton of money. All the scoring's way up. So everybody's, you know, 1 1 at the end of 1, 2 1. And of course, last night's 1 nothing. Sons of bitches. This is a half a goal? Half a goal. <laughs> well, okay. Yeah, that's it's a half a, a goal. Yeah, it's a half a goal. So that's, uh, that's what happens. I, I got screwed. But uh, it's called gambling. And I'll get right back to the table and bet those first period overs again. Uh, the problem I need, well, I get early in the season, I get a little bogged down with selecting certain games instead of just blanket going over first period across the league. Um, and then, and then waiting for the reaction, the correction to occur and then saying, okay, okay, we got to back off now. Um, as teams kind of figure each other out and people get their sea legs, but, uh, it's been, you know, look, look, look what the lightning did last night. Jesus six to nothing. Yeah. Back to back shutouts for a guy that you couldn't pick out of a lineup. It's their goaltender. right? Yeah. Now. I mean, and I mean, it's six goals, a lot of goals. It is. That's a whole lot of gets you some is yeah. what that is. And that was indicative of the way the game was played. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. six, nothing. You're like, Oh, four double deflectors. Right. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. Right. Man. That was straight dominance. Uh, yeah. So anyhow, this is uh it's a fun time because of what he just said. You could do like prize pick type stuff. You can do all these combo bets now where you got NBA, major league baseball, college and pro you pick like four different things that you like put together. That is fun. Uh, I'm going to do that with some of the player prop stuff that I'm doing this weekend. So it's a good time. It, you you got to you know, sit down and look some things up and look a little bit closer uh, to matchups, but yeah, boy, isn't it perfect for you and a cup of coffee? Whoa. That it's the first research. thing I do in the morning. That's yeah. the first thing I do in the morning. It's like, I get up, uh, everybody else is asleep. I get that cup going. I let my dog out actually. And then I sit down. It's like, five, whatever. I pull up the computer. I'm like, okay, let's see if we hit last night and what do we like for today? And then you just start, you know, certain matchups will jump off the page at you right off the bat. You're like, Oh, you print out your sheet and leave it on Clark's desk in his room <laughs> so he can review it every morning and see what you got. No, but Bryce is the first one up because I got to take him to school. And so he'll walk past and he'll look over and he's like, who we got in the league tonight? And he's talking about the NBA. So last night I had the Lakers. And I got lucky to win that game. I, I didn't deserve to win that game, but, uh, I didn't realize at the time that I made the bet, I took the Lakers, that uh, Phoenix was was out without Booker and Beal. It worked out nicely. Even then, I had to come back and win in the fourth. So you had three wagers last night. Yeah. Oh, I'm talking about just prop stuff. That, oh, that was okay. a straight up. I, I yeah. I was just a side. Just that's a different this, wing of the that's business. That's a different wing guys. of betting. That's a, that's just a side. That's just a total aside. Jeff Cameron Show 93.3 Real Talk Radio War Chat TV. Your local news now. One of the four inmates who have been on the run for more than a week after escaping from a Georgia detention center has been caught. Chavis Stokes, 29 years old, was arrested in Montezuma, which is in Macon County. Officials offered no word on the other three inmates, identified as 37-year-old Jonifer Bernard Barnwell, 24-year-old Mark Carey Anderson, and 52-year-old Joey Fournier. The four escaped from the detention center on October 16th and then climbed through a damaged window and fence before driving away in a Dodge Challenger, which they found in Macon last Saturday. Wendy Adelson took the stand Thursday denying any involvement in the murder of her ex-husband and adamantly refuting any suggestion that her family was responsible for his death. Wendy's brother, Charlie Adelson, is on trial for murder, conspiracy, and solicitation in the death of her ex-husband, FSU law professor Dan Markle. Markle was shot to death as he pulled into his driveway on July 18th of 2014. Three other people have already been convicted in the murder for hire plot. This is Rachel Anae with your Real Talk 93.3 Local News Update, brought to you by Macklemore Systems. Tallahassee's go-to Mac store. Check them out online at macklemoresystems.com. This is meteorologist Paul Frobley with your Real Talk 93.3 weather update. High of 84 this afternoon under partly cloudy skies, easterly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Lows level off around 62 tonight, mainly clear. Highs level off around 85 tomorrow, mainly sunny skies and calm. Dry with temperatures a bit above average Sunday and Monday and highs in the mid 80s. This report is brought to you by the Lawn Johns. For all your landscaping and lawn care needs, visit thelawnjohns.com. Right now, 67. This is The Swamp. Snap back, looking left. Throws. Intercepted oh. the floor. Florida gets the stop. It's the Florida-Georgia game on Saturday, October 28th. 15th, 10, to the house. Touchdown, Gators. Kickoff is set for 3.30 Eastern, 2.30 Epps Decorating Center. Call Epps Decorating Center for your next painting project. So every-
everybody knows, Eddie, that you are a spectacular cook. Of course they know that. If they go into Bumpa's, the food is always good. I mm -hmm. mean, everything on the menu. Mm -hmm. Everything at Gordo's is delicious. I always, of course, get the, the bungalow chungalow, as I call it. The bungalow chung, Jeff. Is that the, what, what is the pork? The bunko la chung, oh, Jeff. Okay, the bunko la chung. It's delicious. All these things, all the items, yes. everything you do, a, a master cook. But, sir, I would ask you, what is a skill that you possess that you're particularly proud of that nobody would know and that, uh, that you could share with us here? Growing hair, Jeff. Growing hair. You're an asshole. Gordo's bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. The Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness. Two Tallahassee locations, Midtown on Thomasville Road, and Northside in the Village Common Shopping Center. Online at orangetheoryfitness.com. London over 51 and a half yards. You got that? Jot it down, everybody. Drake London over 51 and a half yards is the, uh, is the wager there. Oh, um, I think during, uh, during this last break, I've got a maybe another one for this next hour. I'll just tease out these player props when I get them. Cause last week I didn't have any. And I ended up having like 19 people in my in like either inbox, Twitter, Instagram, like, Hey dude, where are the player props? I've created a monster. Well, yes, you need to have an executive phone service that costs them just a, a nominal amount. Well, I'll tell you this. If there's any chance that I keep this rolling on player props, that's exactly what's going to happen. Now, I mean, look, I'm in here telling you over on Drake London with Atlanta. I mean, come on now. This is we're digging in. We are digging in. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, you know, we're doing our best. Uh-oh, missed it. Didn't have the chat pulled up, but thank you, Robert. Sitting here about to pour an ice-cold bourbon lemonade and ponder the future of FSU under Coach Mike Norvell. To help my day drink dreaming, what players do you think are future stars in 2024 who are not stars currently? Destin Hill and Akeem Williams. Both are going to be stars. Both are going to be stars. Beyond that, Rodney Hill, perhaps? Have you tapered your enthusiasm on one Rodney Hill? He had a good fourth quarter last week. Uh, I like Rodney Hill a lot. I just think they have a lot of talent in the backfield, and they're about to add to it. And the stud they have coming in is going to get some carries, too. So I just don't know, man. The, the rotation may be too big for him to become a star. Yeah. How about high school player Landon Thomas? Because he said 2024 plus. Yeah, I, I, I suppose. Um, it's nice to see what this offense looks like for a player like Landon with his skill set. We did not know that this was in the playbook before the year started. But, but we knew he wanted it. The damn but we knew he wanted it because he had it at Memphis, and he yeah. described that position. He doesn't even call it an H-back or a tight. What does he call it? Uh, he said in his opening press conference, uh, or maybe the first time we spoke to him about the way he viewed the tight end. I can't even remember what he called it. But anyhow, he has... It's a hybrid position to him. Yes, you have your classic tight end play uh, that, that is incorporated, but also he, he thought of the guys that he liked at the position the way they wanted it to work was that they were diverse in their skill set, that they could line up in the backfield, that they could be an H-back, that they could be a traditional tight end, that you could line them up out wide. You could do all these different things, that they could block and catch and make plays for you, and he wanted that desperately. So it's not a surprise that Mike Norvell went out and got him some. I mean, we were desperate for it. I mean, Cam McDonald was what he was. He was an okay player, but that. You know who hasn't shown much on defense this year because we have a lot of veterans, but was very impressive in fall camp was Edwin Joseph. Mm -hmm. Very, very impressive during fall camp. He's got a chance to be a star. That's a good point, yeah. We'll see. Conrad Husty has a chance to be a yeah. really good player for them. Obviously, he's been fast-tracked. Yeah. He's yeah. getting a lot more reps now, the but, here and now. Yeah, I, I don't know that. So 
again, it depends depends on how you're going to define star. Uh, you know, I, I think Blake's got a chance to be a very good linebacker for them. Uh, he's already, I think how fast tracked he's been to have a true freshman linebacker yep. who was not an early enrollee already getting playing time. Well, well that tells you how far he's come talking about how in high school he played so many positions too. He's never focused on one thing. And this is a completely different level where you have to specify mm. and specialize. And he is wrapping his mind around the, the assignment, but he came in here knowing a little bit about a lot of different positions. And now he's got to really master one. But they like him enough that he's in the rotation. Well, I think it's um, it's cool that you have a guy at a position like that where we've been longing for a guy. I just think you got to amass two or three more of them, uh, and that's an area of concern for me. You know, moving forward, but that's not something that the portal can't help. And you've got spots, and you got to find a way to go get those guys in here that can play and play now. They did it with Tatum Bethune. You know, going out and getting Tatum Bethune from UCF and having him come here and play two full seasons for you has really been a godsend because they did, just didn't have a guy. They really didn't. I mean, Deloach is a nice player, but he's just a guy. He's one guy, and they didn't have anybody else. Uh, I'm not super high on Omar Graham's future, uh, personally. I think he's a oh just an average player. Um, I don't know that's going to get a lot better. DJ Lundy is what he is. So they haven't had it. Blake is your best prospect at the position. Um, but he's not at this point. It's hard to know. Is he going to be elite? Maybe. Yeah. Tatum hasn't had an all world season, but he's had a very, very good season compared to last year. You're wondering, well, what's he going to be? He was banged up. I think he last played year, one arm. Question. Yeah, he really did. I yeah. thought at the end of the year, he was, uh, he was a negative player. He was a negative player because he was beat up, but he has his moments of pure enforcement. Oh, which I is important. It. We don't have a lot of those guys. So, you, you know, if you're looking for somebody to deliver a hit, to inspire the crew, He's one of the first guys you turn to. He will do it, and he will hit the quarterback. He doesn't give a damn. Well, you ought to be able to, Tom. You ought to be able he to hit the quarterback. Been. You're allowed to hit him, and you're allowed to hit him hard. And I don't care the optics on that. Hit the bejesus out of him. Knock their helmet off. Stand over him and laugh about it. It's okay. It's football, man. Let's go. Stop with the nonsense. This is This is really frustrating. Every week. I hope we can get through this weekend where we're not just, even if it's off the air and we don't bring it up on the air, can we just not have a day where somebody says to the other, hey, did you see that call in the Colorado game? Roughing the passer, nobody touched him. Did you see that play? We have that conversation every weekend. Another couple of guys who could be stars next year, if they can be retained. Josh Farmer will be talked about across the country as one of the best defensive tackles next season if he can be retained. Patrick Payton will be talked about as one of the best defensive ends in college football next year. Should he be able to be retained? Oh, I think he'll be retained. I, I, I don't think he's ready to go to the league. And the only area of concern you'd have with him is him wanting to go to the league early. And I don't think he's there yet. Cause he's got, he's got to put on weight. He's got to have a better season. He's having a good season. He could end up having a dominant season. I think he'll come back. Uh, you know, look, I, I think he's a roster retention guy. I think they'll yeah. they'll fight to keep him. And then Farmer's a guy I do worry about because I think he projects nicely to the league and he's been uber productive. So I don't know that you'll be able to keep him. He, he may be on his way on down the road. That was one of the transformations to me. Two of the biggest transformations that I've seen in the last year. You're talking about weight room and or just frame. Josh Farmer is easily one of them. He's he got monster. so much wider. Yeah, he's a monster. It's yeah. crazy. Mm -hmm. And then Hakeem Williams. Easily is yeah. the other one losing 15 pounds and, and really all of a sudden showing speed. We never thought he had from the spring workout to the interview he did last week. Are you like, good Lord, he hit the gym hard. And well, it shows you that when you get high four star, low five star athletes, you're working with different clay, athletes? buddy. Well, where I put the inflection there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is the type of quick turnaround that you can see with the strength and training coach, which is, Hey man, I'm working with pros pros here. This is, Maybe it's a little bit of both my methods, but then this guy is a freak. Watch what happens when a freak goes through the program that I build for him. Uh, funny you did that just now. I did that this morning talking to my brother and I said the word satellites and I said satellites. And then I was like, why did I say it like that? Athletes. It's just a satellite. Why, why, why did I say satellites? <laughs> like, it's like it was a question. Yeah. Do you remember going through uh, language arts and having to put the, uh, the apostrophe yeah, oh, yeah, 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 where the yeah, pronunciation yeah, goes? Yeah. And they're like, just. Do the test. Put, put your fingers up to your mouth and say the word. And then <laughs> where you feel the where, you, where the wind should be, that's where you put the apostrophe.
athletes. I think the football gods are going to get me this weekend because I committed blasphemy and somehow bet against Kyle Whittingham, and I felt bad about it ever since I did it. It's just weighing on me, Tom. I want to get it off my chest. Yeah. I feel bad. Kyle, I'm sorry. You left him a voicemail, I think. I should. I should call him. He's the second best coach in football. And I and here I am. I have not I, you know I've loved him forever and I've bet on him and I've won a ton of money. And how do I repay him? He's in a big game and I bet against his ass. <laughs> so we'll see. Kyle, I hope I get it wrong. He sent you a selfie, and in that selfie is just a disappointed look. Oh, it would it would it would bother me. Uh it would bother me. Because I have the utmost respect for him. He he win at Utah and you win the way that he wins. I just love that every year we go into a season, every single year, and all anybody does is talk about USC. And then Kyle Whittingham's like, well, okay, I guess. I mean, we won the conference and we just keep beating their ass every time we play them, sometimes twice in the same season. I don't know what else I have to do. Good point, Kyle. Good point. Hour number two, forthcoming. Stay with. system doesn't check with you before it takes a break. That's why we're always ready to help any day, anytime, anywhere. And with our annual service agreement, there are no overtime charges ever. At Verno Heating and Air, we will always be there for you. There ain't no heating and air conditioning. Power Mill Training Academy equips motivated athletes focused on baseball and softball with the specific tools to reach their true potential. Now, you'll read that if you go to their website, but I'm here to tell you that, look, whether it's your daughter wanting to play softball, your son wants to play baseball, or maybe they just want to have fun and get the most out of their abilities, and that's where Power Mill comes into play. They've got coaches and camps that teach for every level of play for your son or your daughter. To learn more, go to PowerMillSports.com. Hi, Taco. Hey, champ. How you doing? How you doing? Pull up a pillow. Haven't seen you in a couple of days. Hey, something's different about you. That's right. My people took me to Tally Spay, the affordable spay and neuter clinic on West Tennessee. Tally Spay? Isn't that the place where they... Yeah, they're a low-cost, high-volume spay and neuter clinic. So you're saying you've had some work done? I did. You'd think I'd be depressed, but truth is, I don't even miss them. All I know is, my family is much happier now that I've been altered. My people even brought Mr. Jingles to Tally Spay. Tally Spay, a low-cost, high-volume spay-neuter clinic open to the public, serving Tallahassee and the surrounding areas. How you feeling, Mr. Jingles? Leave me alone! Ugh. You're right. He is a lot nicer. Go to tallyspay.com. That's tallyspay.com. This is Dr. James Ryan Finn. And Dr. Shannon Lord. We are the dynamic duo at Finn Chiropractic, where we seek to get to the cause of your problem. Whether you have neck pain, back pain, headaches, or any joint stiffness. We've developed the Phenomenal Health Exam with some high-tech ways to get to the cause. Our Phenomenal Health Exam will give the answers you need. Get in for the Phenomenal Health Evaluation. Visit our website at finchiro.com. F-E-N-N-C-H-I-R-O.com. Because your chiropractor loves you. There's nothing you can do about it. There's fun to be had every night at the Corner Pocket. Take home prizes on Trivia Tuesdays and Beer Bingo Thursdays. And kickstart your weekend with Martini Fridays. Plus, Happy Hour runs every weekday and game day specials every time the Knolls take the field. Watch all the best games at the Corner Pocket's Vegas Wall. Featuring 560 inches of flat screen TV heaven. Oh, really? The best food, the best drinks, and the best place to watch all the games. Tallahassee loves the Corner Pocket. Coming up next, more of the Jeff Cameron Show, live and local on Real Talk 93.3, WVFT, Greta Tallahassee. 
the latest betting odds and live movements from Vegas. This is your action update. Now here are your latest lines from our guys in the desert. NFL football, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers dropped to 3-4, and four, losing at Buffalo last night by a 24-18 score. Looking at the odds to win the NFC South, the Falcons are the favorite. They pay out at minus 105 to win the division. The Saints now have the second-best odds at plus 175. Minion, the Buccaneers are plus 420, and the Panthers are paying out at plus 5,500. NFL football coming up on Sunday. The 5-2 and two Miami Dolphins play host to the 2-5 and five Patriots. Miami a 9.5-point favorite over under at 47. And the Jaguars are in Pittsburgh to take on the Steelers. Jacksonville favored by 2.5, the over under at 41. For the latest odds all the time, visit vcin.com. I'm Matt Pauley. This has been your action update on Tallahassee's Real Talk Station, Real Talk 93.3. It's Macy's friends and family. Get ready for the holidays with an extra 30% off brands that rarely go on sale with your coupon or Macy's card. And take 15% off fragrance, skincare, makeup, and more great beauty gift ideas. Or shop specials they'll love while supplies last, now at Macy's. Plus, Macy's Star Rewards members earn on every purchase except gift cards, services, and fees. Savings off regular sale and clearance prices, exclusion supply. Find something so you at Macy's friends and family. When your people are ready, your business is ready. Cintas makes sure they have what they need to perform their best. Whether it's freshly laundered work apparel for almost any job imaginable, fire protection systems that are tested and inspected, first aid and safety supplies, floor mats, or cleaning tools and restroom products, stocked and ready when you need them. Better work days happen together, so visit Cintas.com. Oh, I'm ready! And get ready for the work day. A cup of Joe, Java, Brew, Go Go Beans, Brainwater, Liquid Lightning, Wakey Wakey Juice, whatever you call your cup of coffee, you're missing out if it's not Grassroots Coffee. At grassrootscoffee.com, you'll find an easy way to order the best roasted coffee beans available. It's very simple. Choose the blend you want and how you want it ground, and the bag you receive will have the date your beans were roasted and packaged on it, all written by hand and signed by the Roastmaster himself. You'll know that's as fresh as it gets. You can get Grassroots outside of your house also at some of your favorite restaurants in town. Next time you're out to eat, try asking for Grassroots Coffee by name because there's a good chance they will have it for you. And if you own a business, Grassroots Coffee has options to stock your break rooms with all the productivity powder your team needs. Plus, like some other options that you'll find at work, Grassroots Coffee actually is a part of our community. Hit to grassrootscoffee.com today and get yourself a treat. Some locally owned, locally roasted, and locally loved Grassroots Coffee. Your friendly neighborhood bar and grill just got a whole lot closer to home. You can now order delicious Smitty's Tap House and Grill for delivery directly to your doorstep. Just visit smittystaphouse.com, click the order online button, and choose pickup or delivery. Enjoy Smitty's famous handmade pretzel with beer cheese, juicy pub burger, or even the amazing schnitzel sandwich, delivered fresh right to your doorstep. Support local and order online today for takeout or delivery at smittystaphouse.com, where everybody knows his name. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. Broadcasting live from Florida's capital city, this is the Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness on Real Talk 93.3. Now, stop what you're doing and listen closely. It's time for the Jeff Cameron Show in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.
meandering conversations and the like. So I should probably get to it here. In addition to asking how everybody is ready for football, picking Florida state, all that good stuff. I want to say this kudos to this old guy. How often am I praising old people? Almost never. I ran into an old guy yesterday at Publix and he kicked ass because he had self-awareness. How about old people with self-awareness? You never see it. All right. Usually they're loud on their cell phone for no reason in the middle of the store because they're old. And they don't know any better. And you're like, I don't need to hear your conversation. You can mute that. What are we doing here? You don't have to pick up. It's okay. Anyhow, so that kind of stuff is what you normally see out of old people. Too many items in the 10 checkout line, you know, that kind of stuff. You're like, what are we doing here, Pops? They're at a breakfast place and they're at the bar and they put their newspapers three seats to the left of them, yeah. and they have a stack of newspapers. Yeah, like, yeah. hey, hey, Mitch. Hey, what are we doing? Trying to get some, I mean, yeah. a little something here. This old guy whooped ass. So he's in front of me. I've got two items. I had to pick up a sandwich for Bryce, and then I had a jug of lemonade for Clark. He loves Publix lemonade. They get it two for $5. What are you going to do? So I'm like, all right, so I've got this, right? And I go through the quick checkout lane and this guy's got, I don't know, whatever he's got. He's got like lunch meat, a loaf of bread and flowers. Fair enough. So flowers for his wife, I'm presuming. That's awfully nice. Whatever. Not thinking anything of it. And he goes, uh, yeah, I'm finally going to get these flowers. I keep getting this coupon in the in my email. And he says to the girl and she's like, oh, great, great. She's like, you got the coupon? And he goes, yeah, it's on my phone. They said I just had to show it to you. And she's like, right. OK. And she seems to understand who's promoting this thing. Right. So he holds it up. And then she's, it, she's scanning it and it's not working. And she goes, ah, it doesn't, it, it's not taking it. Hold on. I'll call the manager. Cause she wants to give him the flowers. And he goes, no, no, no. I hate being a guy that gets behind a guy like me in this situation. I'm like, look at this guy. He goes, that's nonsense. This poor gentleman's waiting just to check out with these two items. You don't worry about it, ma'am. Don't worry. About it. I don't need the flowers that bad. Just put them back. I'm like, my man is kicking ass. I really don't love my wife anyway. Well, this is just incredible. They were free. That's why I was giving her flowers. I mean, who are we kidding? So he might as well say that, right? So right, he's sitting right. there, and then she's like, no, no, no. She'll come right over. It's no big deal. We've had this problem with these coupons before. And he goes, ah, if it takes less than 30 seconds, you can do it. Anything more than that, I'm not going to make this gentleman wait. Or let him go before me. Sir, you win the Old People Hall of Fame Award for this week. This is amazing. Having a clue? Being self-aware, knowing that it's nonsense to make somebody wait because your stupid-ass coupon doesn't work? Now, listen, son. You could do without the ball cap. A little respect indoors. <laughs> he was wearing a hat. But it was fantastic. I wanted to give him a hug. I'm like, there you go, old man. There you go. Good on you. Chest bump, old guy. Proud of you. Anyhow, so it only took 30 seconds. He got his flowers. He's like, all right, thanks, thanks. Sorry about that. No, no, you're awesome. Go on and give your wife those flowers. Tell her it costs 50 bucks. There it is. <laughs> he made the short list. He makes the short list. I'm proud of him. Nuts. Couldn't believe it. What a day. What a day. I was like, oh, man, it's going to be a good weekend. This happened last night. Proud of you, old man. I don't know if he listens to the show or not at all. Well, if he does, he just drove off the road. Oh, my God. It was him. I made the Jeff Cameron Old People Hall of Fame, I of hate which him. I'm the only member. I don't even know why I'm <laughs> I hate him. Though. Oh, no. I helped Jeff. <laughs> he two-time Bowden. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be funny. It was great. I was proud of him. Very proud of him. Somebody asked me about a three-team parlay. I think it was Troy, and he is as loyal as they come uh, when it comes to watching this show, listening to this show. He's in the high country. My man is sitting up there freezing his ass off. So, Troy, let me take a look at this wager you got here, and I want to ask you a couple of questions about it. You have FSU minus 13 and a half. How? And I want you to answer them immediately. Is this a teaser? What are you doing? You teased it down because that number is 20 plus. So if you teased it down, that's fine. You just got to let me know here. I want to see what kind how of. Far, how long ago is this from? Uh, 144 p.m. And, uh, and then he's got Oklahoma minus two and a half. I love that you're living in the chat 25 minutes ago. No, I just now looked over there and I saw it and I thought I should probably say something to the guy. He's loyal. He's solid. And he's got a bet. He wants to, he wants confirmation. He's given only seven and a half with Georgia. So he did tease all of these numbers and group them so that the odds didn't kill him because he teased those numbers way down. Georgia's 14 and a half. I got to double check what OU is. FSU is 20 and a half. I think 
at this point. He's got it down to 13 and a half. So he tees touchdowns down. What are you getting there, Troy? Yeah, plus what? Uh, well, I are you getting plus anything with that? I'm going to guess plus 145. Maybe, maybe. I got. I don't know what the original OU number was because I'm not betting in this week. But, man, uh, I would tease that seven and a half down to under seven if you're going to do that and just really hedge it and, and play it safe. Get it down under a key number like seven and get it get it down to six and a half on that Georgia part of it. Plus 140. Look at that. Is it plus 140? Yeah. Well, do the George. Well, at this point, then get Georgia down under seven and a half and play equal money. Yeah. I mean, yeah, uh, yeah just protect yourself. That you, you don't want to. I mean, what if how pissed are you going to be when they win 21 14 in your or when Kansas wins outright? Well, they're not going Wrong to. Wrong team's favorite. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> the bean machine. They're not, <laughs> they're not going to. Oh, man. That's fun. That is fun. So uh, to answer your question, I'd do it, but I'd get it down under six, under seven and a half, under seven and a half. I'd get it to six and a half is where I'd get it back to Florida state, back to the game. I said before the season began, this was the game I was circling and I said it kind of comedically, but at the same time I was talking about how tired I am of wake forest. And I just want to commend Dave Clawson for a very, very rich and well-played strategy. So overly complimentary and sincere in the manner in which it was delivered. Now I got a soft spot in my heart. Just beat him by 30. No, he's just been a, beat him by 30. He has been an absolute clown several times in the last four or when five years. When was he a clown? I will, I will find him complaining and whining as Boy, though he's Coach K on the day. He can, can compl- I, I don't know about whining. I, I, that's interesting. I want you to find it. I will. I, mean, I can't right now. I, mean, you know, I, I know we're doing a show. But Dave Clawson whining and Google won't. I don't know that that's nah, gonna... you got to have to find it. I, I Dave, uh, no, Dave will stick up for Wake, but I think he's always been pretty complimentary of, uh, or at least of Mike. I, maybe maybe previous. I think he's looking at the film and saying Florida State's going to have to shoot themselves in the foot. It's a smart move on his part. It's over. strategic. We're going to get smoked. But you don't think it was insincere, his compliments about Mike? I mean, there's no chance you think that. I think he really thinks very highly of Mike Norvell. He probably, yeah, most do. We, well, yeah. we discussed that. Most no, I, I, but I'm saying I don't think there was anything insincere about that. And I think he knows that Mike's done a really good job. And I think he's accurate to point out embracing what modern college football is. That's a that's a fair. Like I think he would have to see that, realize that, recognize that in order to say it. It's the same pattern. Like you could you could take issue with the tone difference between the two, but this is exactly what Dino did. Well, Dino. so but in the summer meetings he talked about how the NIL game is very strong in Tallahassee and full credit to Tallahassee and Florida State for getting that all done. You saw Dino last night, another ass beaten by that sorry Syracuse by team. Our opponent in Charlotte, the Virginia Tech Hokies. Uh, Syracuse is exactly who I thought they were. Sorrier than hell. And they took another beating and they're going to take nothing but beatings the rest of the way cuz they're not any good. Well, their coach told him as much. He broke them. They played somebody. That's what happened. That's a, that's the MO every year with Syracuse. They go, oh, you beat Purdue to start the year. Great. Then you beat up on some poor sap that has no chance. Then you played halfway decent in the first de- decent team you saw, and you kept it within a touchdown or two early. And then we go, oh, Syracuse. And then Syracuse sucks the rest of the way and goes six and six. That's just who they are. They're garbage. F them. Beat them eternally by 50 <laughs> all the time. Damn. All I hate them. We are, they are a locked in opponent. They're one of our three. Annually beat that ass. It's fine. It's fun. We have the orange three: Miami, Clemson, and Syracuse. They're our fixed opponents while we are still For here. Now, while we are still in the ACC, in I do that. That's the highlight of the week. On Fridays, we look back a little bit. The highlight of the week is that there are multiple articles born from the basketball media days. Basketball. That, <laughs> that somehow ended up referencing football. And uh, because that's exactly what they're talking about. They're not talking about basketball. They're talking about who wants to leave this conference because the money's not right in football. And that came up not once, but twice. How about a commissioner of a conference that has done nothing but celebrate basketball forever and a day, have media days and have to answer for why teams are thinking about possibly leaving, knowing that that is solely stemming from football. Oh, wait, you can talk about your basketball. We're not here to do that. Nobody cares. We're here to talk about the teams that want to leave because of football. Well, you know what I tell them is, <laughs> are you got you him interested? down pretty good, by the way. This is solid. Well, it's because he sounds like a priest. 
that uh, oh, at, at Clearwater ooh, Central Catholic ooh, down gee, scary. circa 2004. Mm, mm-hmm. Are we trying to build for success or dollars? You know, that's the question. I think we got to be careful. We got to be careful yeah. here. Mm-hmm. What's our goal? Is it dollars or success? Your thoughts. So broken every time he takes to the dais. Doesn't even try to give the appearance of strength. You know, as a father to do oh. Division One athletes, mm-hmm. I just, we got to be careful here. What are we doing? While we're on the subject of asides and things that are interesting before I uh, not only continue to close the gap, I'm down one now to my mom after sweeping last week. We're going to go ahead and take the lead back. But before I get there and before we get to red zone, I want to send my best wishes to those who get invited to the Bahamas Bowl. Did you see this news? So ordinarily, you're not very good if you make it to the Bahamas Bowl. You know, you're not a you're not a real good team. I just remember a Bahamas Bowl broadcast, which is uh, Steve Levy looks to have enjoyed the Bahamas experience. <laughs> <laughs> he's Steve. as he's as pink as an unpainted oh, Joe Campbell profusely. scoreboard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rivaled only by our guy at the Outback Bowl. Oh, that's the best ever. Some fifteen years ago. Yeah, the line, former linebacker for the Lions, Spielman. Spielman. Yeah. Oh my God. Well, at least Spielman had an excuse. He was in Tampa on New Year's yeah. Eve, and they used to kick that game off at ten in the morning. Oh, it was cruel. It, poor Spielman going into the booth on January the first, looking like he had been up drinking up until about an hour ago. When they went to him in the booth initially, he did that, <laughs> he like, was, fix himself, thing, like, gearing up like the. He was strong. That's right. <laughs> Today is going to be a war of attrition between these two conferences. Me and the sun. <laughs> it's going to be a war of attrition between me and the sun and that wastebasket in my vomit. That <laughs> He was just hanging on for dear life. And the problem is he's got to button up that suit. And he's a big man. It's hot as Hades. Because it's unfortunate for him. He's in Tampa. And for some reason, on January the 1st, it's 82 and humid. Every year. And he's like, son of a bitch. <laughs> he's just trying to get through that initial. Because oh. once you once you get past that, the rules relax. You can roll up the sleeves. Right, you can, right. You know, yeah, but that initial. Little... Yeah, the pre, pregame shot. Oh, that's right, Mitch. <laughs> This is going to be one big time battle here today in Tampa. I think that was Mich- No, that was not. It wasn't Lee. Um, it wasn't um, Tariko. Tariko. No. I don't think that he wasn't was with- Michigan, South Carolina. No, no that was because uh, they had the Monday Night Crew for a while. It was the Iowa, game. Michigan State, maybe. No, Iowa. Iowa, South Carolina. It could have been. That that sounds right. Forever in a day, it That's, was Iowa and South Carolina. <laughs> yeah, it seems like, well, this sounds right. Yeah. It's the Outback Bowl, after all. And why is it hot? Spielman's still asking. It's January. Do you think I'd have paid for that hooker if I had known it was going to be 97 degrees? I got to tell you, Poor even Spielman. though, you know, this is going to be real attrition because these are two cold weather teams coming down here. <laughs> and folks, folks, let me, me what you. I tell you. It's not cold. It is not cold here. It is not anything approaching cold. This is the warmest 1045 <laughs> I've ever been around. You should have seen my face when the sun shone through my hotel window this morning. <laughs> Holy Jesus. <laughs> I got to get over to the stadium. I don't remember how I got here, to be honest. He walked in all disheveled. How you doing, Mitch? Jesus. <laughs> it's okay. We're it's a good. Big night. We're good. We're good. We're good. Big night. It's a fun town. How's my tie? So back to my point here. Didn't uh, shower, did you, Chris? <laughs> don't worry about me. Let's get the intro. I'm ready to go. Three, two, let's go. Let's fire it up. So the Bahamas Bowl, again, you're not typically a real good team if you make it to the Bahamas Bowl, but your grand reward just for being bowl eligible is that you get to go to Nassau. You get to go to the Bahamas. You get to go have fun with your teammates after a tough year, a year that probably saw you go six and six, somewhere in that neighborhood. You've qualified. You fought like hell to get bowl eligible. Your coach comes in and says, Bahamas Bowl, guys. Been a tough year, but I'm proud of you. You fought on. We got bowl eligible, and we're going to the Bahamas. December the 6th, we'll be playing in the Bahamas a week from now. The season just ended, but we're about to go to the bowl. That's how it works. No, 
they're doing renovations in the stadium. So if you oh, this is awesome. Oh, where are they moving it? Charlotte. So oh, no. like, <laughs> <laughs> so they're like, guys, we made it. We got an invite to the Bahamas Bowl. Hell yes. I've always wanted to go to the Bahamas. Well, you're still going to be longing. We're going to Charlotte for the Bahamas Bowl, boys. Save up. Maybe one day you can get on one of those sorry cruises with all the other fat, fat, fat asses that want to go to the Bahamas. Line up at the trough. One of the bowl activities is a keynote speech delivered by Jim Phillips, ACC commissioner. <laughs> it's going to be riveting. What do they give as a gift? A watch, a plastic watch. And some words from Jim Phillips. Jim Phillips. You know, I believe uh, our media partner, Dennis Miller from the CW, is here. Dennis? Just so you know. Oh, and he no. wasn't in the tents. No. That was the best ever. Oh, I guess Dennis is on his way. The Bahamas Bowl last year, uh, just so you know, was Alabama-Birmingham defeating Miami of Ohio in a riveting 24-20 to game played on December the 7th. I wasn't far off. That was a random guess on my part. <laughs> This year, you'll watch the Bahamas Bowl between the same mid-American conference losers and Conference USA and Charlotte. There you go. I just like that uh, maybe at ESPN, Steve Levy caught wind that they were moving it the year before. Oh, hey, yeah. he's like, ask out of the assignment. Yeah. It's not going to be no, down here it, next it's year. It's in Charlotte. Jesus. Thank you. Yeah. Another my time. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Get me out of this. That's a toughie. And funny. We got to do Red Zone next. We'll do it. Jeff Cameron Show, 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chant TV. Hi, everybody. It's Ed Dean, Florida's number one statewide radio talk show. Now in Tallahassee, afternoon drive from 5 to 6 p.m. right here on Real Talk 93.3 FM. Yes, highly entertaining, fast-paced, never boring. We always give you the story behind the story when you catch the Ed Dean radio show. And we are ready to go. Tallahassee daily, 5 to 6 p.m. It's the Ed Dean radio show on Real Talk 93.3 FM, WVFT. Enterprises, roofing and construction services. T-Spark, T-SparkConstruction.com. We conquer all peaks. We fix those darn leaks. Call 850-766-1340. T-Spark Enterprises, roofing and construction services. T-Spark, T-SparkConstruction.com. License number CCC 1331204. Hey, no fans, our partner ISF Inc. is a national management and IT consulting firm located right here in Tallahassee, Florida, solving the future for state governments through strategy, process, and technology. As a trusted advisor for state governments, ISF knows the importance of defining a clear and detailed strategy. Our friends at ISF can help your organization create a strategy that sets you on a path to success. ISF, your vision plus our expertise brings your brilliant ideas to life. Visit ISF.com to learn more. ISF, solving the future. So everybody knows, Eddie, that you are a spectacular cook. Of course they know that. If they go into Bumpas, the food is always good. I mm -hmm. mean, everything on the menu. Mm -hmm. Everything at Gordo's is delicious. I always, of course, get the, what, the bungalow chungla, as I call it. The bungalow chung, Jeff. Is that the, what, what is the pork? The Banco La Chung, oh, Jeff. Okay, the Banco La Chocolate. It's delicious. All these things, all the items, yes. everything you do, a, a master cook. But, sir, I would ask you, what is a skill that you possess that you're particularly proud of that nobody would know and that, uh, that you could share with us here? Growing hair, Jeff. Growing hair. You're an asshole. Gordo's bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. Man, I just got a text from my wife. She wants me to cook dinner and then snuggle on the couch next to a roaring fire. So what's the problem, Dave? You already got the new grill, and you're a great cook. I've got one major problem. We don't have a fireplace. Man, that's an easy fix. Just call Hearth and Patio. they got a lot of fireplaces that can help you for your romantic evenings. Wood, gas, electric, and a ton of different sizes, man. Call Hearth and Patio today, 850-727-4282, or visit them online at hearthpatiotallahassee.com. Hearth and Patio, ignite. That spark in your life. Tallahassee's newest local radio show is America in View with Matt and Brent Doster. What?
93.3. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. Welcome back to the Jeff Cameron Show, sponsored by Legendary Home Loans, a mortgage experience designed around speed, simplicity, and customer service. Before you buy your next home, contact our friend Shannon Young with Legendary Home Loans. Visit FSUHomeLoans.com, FSUHomeLoans.com. For the Red Zone, which is an awful lot of fun. And before you cue up the awesome intro to the Red Zone, we have a reminder of why it is we do this wonderful segment with our friends, obviously, at Artisan Financial Strategies. It's an important one. You guys should pay attention. Old fans, we all know how important it is. Score in the Red Zone. In fact, we're pretty good at it. But are you prepared for success in the retirement Red Zone? Because the five years leading up to your retirement date and the five just after, are very critical and it's a time for thoughtful planning for you and your family. And that's because uh, we got a guy here for you to help you out. Our friend and fellow Noel, I might add Adam Tolliver and his team at artisan financial strategies prepared to coach you to victory here. Some of us are at midfield. Some of us are right there down along the goal line, ready to punch it in, whether making sure you know how much you can spend without running out of money, which is nice. Protecting yourself and your family against rising health care costs or carefully planning your legacy, the Artisan team brings a combined 30-plus years of planning experience, world-class resources to help you navigate the way for more information. And this is what I would do. Go here. I did this. Go check this out. Noelretirement.com. It's all one word. Noelretirement.com. Educate yourself. They'll answer any questions. In fact, give them a call. It's uh, Adam's a lot of fun to talk to. In fact, you'll probably end up talking a lot of football with Adam. He's very knowledgeable. And he is diehard Florida State through and through. Give him a call today. Go to nolretirement.com. Cue it up. Welcome to the majesty. Every freaking rep. The elegance. To win the game. Wally hits the upright. It's no good. You have entered. Someone burned down the funeral home. You burnt the funeral home. Lives will be changed. Mothers will cry. When you see your players give all that they have and uh, and you lose that way, it's tough. Legacies are etched into eternity. I know who I am. North South Dakota was his brother from West Virginia. This is the Red Zone. That's good to know. All right, good sir. I'm excited to see what this sounds like and what those questions are. So fired up first down is all right. Thanks to Dave in the chat. This was a good question. He meant it as kind of I think a, a joke, but it's a good one. Higher total tomorrow, Wake Forest rush yards or Florida State penalty yards. Good <laughs> question, Dave. Thank you. Well, I'll tell you, I don't think they're going to line up and run the ball all that well, and it does seem that uh, we are inevitably charged with uh, lunacy at least two to three times a game, so I'm going to say more penalty yards for Florida State okay. than rush yards for Wake. I like our run defense against standard runs, and I think Wake's going to have a hard time moving the ball on the ground. And it's not like the quarterback options they have are going to be running up and down the field. Yeah, penalty yeah. yards is the answer. Okay, good, good answer. Second down, tougher test for Florida State football with the knowledge that you have now, mm. it's imperfect, but you have it, tomorrow at Wake or next week at Pitt? What next is, week at Pitt. It's the tougher test. Well, can I have a caveat on that? I'm still sticking by next week at Pitt. Neither are all that tough if you play well. The only reason I say that is, again, the caveat would be, I just don't know how many of our guys are out, and that would – kind of tell me that's what i'm saying it's, it's imperfect information it is imperfect i'll still say next week okay 
Third down, over or under two and a half field goal attempts tomorrow for Ryan Fitzgerald. Under. Hmm. It's a very good red zone all, a defense that we are facing. Yeah, it'll be Forest. two. He'll kick two field goals tomorrow. Okay. Now we are leaving the realm of football for fourth down, and we're going back to the grocery store. Nice. And to the checkout line. Okay. And that delightful old man who was very courteous. Assuming you have over $100 in groceries, a week's worth. You're going to get the week's easily, worth for the family. Easily. So it's over 200 that's pushing easily. two. Easily. It's not pushing two. It's well over two. That's, you got grown boys. I got a 16-year-old as of next weekend and a, a 13-year-old, yes. And you have somebody behind you in line as you've stacked things on the uh the conveyor belt yeah but the normal conveyor belt i'm not in the 10 items or no, less line i'm you not, are in i'm in the right line you're in the correct line mm -hmm. but the person behind you has one no has blank number of items before i let them through before you don't let them through mm -hmm. how long have i been there have i started to put my items on the conveyor belt how many items have i put on the conveyor belt you are Two, in the three, four. <laughs> okay. I mean, it matters. Right. Okay. All right. All right. So yeah. we're gonna we're gonna play this down okay. all the way. I got it. You're a, almost seventy five percent of the way done with the. Oh well, then ball. he screwed. He screwed. You pulled up at the wrong time, buddy. You can't expect me to put back seventy five percent of my two hundred and fifty dollars oh. worth of oh, groceries that... for your two item ass who rolled up late. Look, I'm sorry. Them's the breaks. Now, if I had the put scanning just... process has not begun. Uh, no. No. If, if. So you're saying the, the answer is uh, zero? At that point, buddy. Look, no, wow. you said 75%. You said 75% of my items are already on the belt. I'm not putting all of them back. That's ridiculous. Now, I would always step aside if I hadn't done any at all for certain. If I had a whole grocery cart full of groceries and this guy rolls up with two things. Well, but go ahead, buddy. I got that all day long. Now, hmm. but again. If, yeah, they don't need the belt if they have uh, such a small amount of items. So I'm just saying, what is the number that's reasonable, you know, to say no? Is it? I don't know. I know. Five? What it, I, is it seven? Again, I'm going to I'm going to cite the Supreme Court here, Tom. We can't define pornography. We just know what it is when we see it. I'm telling you, I know based on just a feel when I'm sitting there. OK, I'm sitting here. You roll up. I've got 13 items on a conveyor belt. You're effed. That's the end of it. Now, if I don't, if I got two or three, I might glance over and be like, oh, go ahead, buddy. But probably two or three. Depends on how big the items are, too. And am I in a hurry? What's the time frame? Do I need to get back for something? Am I about to miss kickoff? If I'm about to make kick miss kickoff, you're screwed. This is a this is a neutral situation. You're in no <laughs> rush whatsoever. Well, then I'm probably going to be a little bit more lax with the how, how I let somebody go through. Sure, take your time, but go ahead, go ahead. But again... If I've already got a bunch of things there, I'm just wasting time now putting them back off the thing. I don't understand what, what this uh, obsession is with taking things off of well, the Well, you're belt. telling me you just want the guy to go through and hold them up in the air? If they have, well, what's the amount? Yeah, <laughs> just hand them, to the, you hand them to the clerk. Now we've really convoluted this whole thing. It's, I don't think we have. I think we have. If you're just, go to the 10 items line. Why are you bothering with me? You have you have two items in your hand according to this scenario. Go get your ass over to the fleeting line where everybody's riding the hell out, so, or or do the side item. Go do the thing where you go around to yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Go do that, buddy. Get your newspaper while you're at it. Nobody buys them anymore. There you go. Okay. So on fourth down, we've learned that Jeff is considering you, a person with six or seven items, mm -hmm. to be a dumbass. You're in the and wrong. You're not worthy. You're not worthy of the pass through. That's what he says. I, I did. I, well, I would say that privately. That's it. Look at this dumbass. Perhaps you should retire from grocery shopping because you're not good at it, is what he would say. Well, he could say that all he wants as he sat behind no, me you, and watched me. What, yeah, what oh, you yeah, would okay, say. All to right, the yeah. All right. Well, yeah. yeah. Fair enough. I'm just, I'm a very considerate shopper. Very considerate shopper. Mm. Oh, I am. I'm not a checker outer. I am. I'm the most considerate. Probably nobody more considerate than me when it comes to shopping. I think that's true. If there were a contest and we were monitored by hidden cameras, I'd make the finals. They'd be like, this guy. Even when you're the jerk speeding around corners during a very busy time in the grocery store, I'm the guy that goes, oh, sorry, and pulls back my cart, even though I should plow your ass because you are being reckless. I know. Phrasing, Jeff, phrasing. <laughs> why did I have a vision of a 2013 ACC championship game in my head? I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> 
Artisan Financial Services. No retirement. That was, a, that was a tough down. Fourth down was a tough one today. Yeah, we got into a lot of stuff there. It was, it's layered. Like most things, it's not black or white. It's gray. It's nuanced. It's Jeff Cameron Show, 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chant TV. Your local news now. A Tuesday night incident involving a vehicle left one driver in a hole estimated to be 15 to 20 feet deep. Just before 9 p.m. Tuesday, the fire department along with Sycamore Fire Department and Gadsden County EMS were dispatched to Bonnie Hill Road for a motor vehicle accident. The area is just north of Flat Creek Road. Upon arrival, the driver was unable to be located until a nearby resident who was first on scene heard a man calling out from a wooded area. The male driver was found in a deep hole by fire and EMS crews. The driver sustained injuries, but none appeared to be life Threatening. The conspiracy and murder trial of Charlie Adelson is now underway. Opening statements span nearly two hours Thursday morning, and witnesses are now taking the stand. Charlie Adelson is accused in the 2014 murder of his former brother-in-law, FSU law professor Dan Markle. He's accused of hiring hitmen to kill Markle, who was in the midst of a custody battle with Adelson's sister, Wendy. This is Rachel and A with Real Talk 93.3 Local News Update, brought to you by Macklemore Systems. Tallahassee's go-to Mac store. Check them out online at macklemoresystems.com. This is meteorologist Paul Trombley with your Real Talk 93.3 weather update. Daytime highs approaching 84 this afternoon. Under partly cloudy skies, winds out of the east, 5 to 10 miles per hour. Mainly clear skies tonight, lows dip down to about 62. Mainly sunny skies and call again tomorrow. Daytime highs approaching 85. Dry with temperatures a bit above average Sunday and Monday and highs in the mid-80s. This report is brought to you by the Lawn Johns. For all your landscaping and lawn care needs, visit thelawnjohns.com. Right now, 82. Tallahassee's biggest, baddest Halloween fashion costume contest is in the Brass Tap in Midtown tomorrow night. And no cover charge with a costume contest where the first place gets 500 bucks cash. Registration begins at 8, free to enter. Bring your entourage to cheer you on. Tons of spooky specialty cocktails to choose from, like margaritas, zombie teenies, and more. Live DJ spinning from 9 p.m. to 1 a.m. The 10th annual biggest, baddest Halloween bash at the Brass Tap in Midtown. With a $500 grand prize for the best costume. Tomorrow night. So everybody knows, Eddie, that you are a spectacular cook. Of course they know that. If they go into Bumpas, the food is always good. I mm -hmm. mean, everything on the menu. Mm -hmm. Everything at Gordo's is delicious. I always, of course, get the what, the bungalow chungla, as I call it. The bungalow chung, Jeff. Is that a, what, what is the pork? The bungalow chung, oh, Jeff. Okay, the bungalow chungla. It's delicious. All these things, all the items, yes. everything you do, a, a master cook. But, sir, I would ask you, what is a skill that you possess that you're particularly proud of that nobody would know and that, uh, that you could share with us here? Growing hair, Jeff. Growing hair. You're an asshole. Gordo's bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. The Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness. Two Tallahassee locations, Midtown on Thomasville Road, and Northside in the Village Common Shopping Center. Online at orangetheoryfitness.com. For the fan in me, but that's how it goes. Won the other game as well. And now we sit one game apart with an interesting slate. So if you would, cue it up, Tom Lang. And now for another edition of the family pick, Nick. Go to your room! My the meatloaf! Take it away, Jeffrey. <laughs> All right, Mama, we both had Buffalo last night, most assuredly, right? Yes, yes, we did, and I'm glad I did. You know, I, I'm so frustrated about my buckaroos. I tell you, they feel like, they're, you know, like last night, that game could have gone either way. Mm, mm. But, but we we just make 
dumb mistakes or we get a penalty, but I will say that I think the play calling is leaves a lot to be desired. I thought I was going to like this Canales guy. I don't know. Maybe I do, but I, I don't know. We got to get rid of bowls. I really think we do. Perhaps I'll just tell you this. There are two aspects to address here. A, uh, I too am frustrated with Canales. I bring it up on the air all the time. He is hell bent on running on first down. He's hell bent on running second down and making sure that it's third and long. That's an yeah. impossible way to live in the NFL when it's third and you're behind the chains. We run on first down more than any team in the National Football League. So it's not an opinion that I think he runs too much. It's a fact they run too much. Their success rate is below 30 percent on those runs we can't we can't run the ball no we can't run the ball right but we but for god's sake i mean if we get and then if we did like last evening i think or maybe it was the week before we had a really great run and of course they get called for holding yes because they have to hold in order for us to succeed running the ball it's not like we're really good at running the football we don't have an elite talent at back we don't have an elite offensive line so it's not good. And then, you know, I mean, Baker's who he is. So this was kind of always going to be the season, Mom. They gave you some uh, a false sense of who they were by winning a couple games early against bad teams in this godforsaken division that we're in. All those teams suck. And this is who we are. Inefficient, below average at quarterback, can't run the ball. That's what you got. But I don't really think most of this is Baker's fault. I actually think he's done. Some he's okay. Well. He's all right. I mean, he hasn't really been the one that's killed us. I mean, I'm no, but he's not a guy that can overcome the weaknesses I just described. Like great quarterbacks, plus level quarterbacks can overcome some inefficiencies on your offense, but he can't because he's a middle of the road quarterback. So it's not his fault. I don't. I, I don't disagree with that. He's an average quarterback. If you put a ton of talent around him, he might have a shot at being okay. But they don't have that, and they're not that, and he's not that. So that's where we're at, Mom. It's going to be a long year. It's oh, all right. man, I tell you. But, <laughs> well, it just frustrates me no end. I feel like sometimes I could call a better play than I see this. Every call. fan in America thinks that. Mom, here we go. We both had all Buffalo. All right, all right. Here we go. Now, there's some tricky games this week. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm nervous. New England at Miami. <laughs> Oh, who's at Miami? At, no, at, no, pay attention. New England at Miami. Oh, New England. Okay. Um, Miami. That is correct. Um, Los Angeles at Dallas. Oh, Dallas. Minnesota at Green Bay. Oh, isn't that a terrible game? Um, well, maybe yeah. not. Um, it's all right. Minnesota. How about that? Rolling with Minnesota, yeah. Jordan Love, who we thought might be good, is not good. We're both going to take Minnesota. Atlanta at Tennessee. Oh, and I hate to pick them, but I'm taking Atlanta. I don't know why. They're both not any good, but I took Atlanta. I did, too. New Orleans at Indianapolis. Oh, yeah. Um, More not any good. I know. I know. They're neither one. Um, I took Indy. Me, too. Okay. Surprisingly, I did. Okay. The Jets at the Giants. Not any good. I know. I'm taking the Jets. I'm not giving up on them just yet. I'm taking the Jets, too. Okay. Jacksonville at Pittsburgh. Jacksonville. Me, too. Philadelphia at Washington. Philadelphia. Houston at Carolina. Yeah, I don't know. This isn't a good game, either. I'm taking Houston. Damn you. Me, too. (laughs) Cleveland at Seattle. (laughs) Seattle. I'm taking Cleveland. Okay. I love Cleveland's defense. They're awesome. I'm taking Cleveland. I know. I thought about that too. I just feel like when they travel to Seattle, I Yeah, it's tough. I'm not listen, it's a toss up game. I may lose it. You may have me here. Uh Kansas City at Denver. Kansas City. Yep. Baltimore at Arizona. Baltimore. Cincinnati at San Francisco. Oh, uh San Francisco. And finally, the last two. Golly, we just we, we're gonna have one different here. Chicago at the Chargers. The Chargers. Vegas at Detroit. Detroit. We only have the one game one difference. One game, so we'll be tied if you happen to win that game. If I win the singular game, and that really is a coin flip game. So there we go. All right. That is a coin flip game. I don't My know. hope. Let, let me just ask you this, because I know I was listening to some of the media today, and and they were talking about the Bucks and the whole coaching situation, and they came up with five names that they thought would be a good choice for the Bucks. And one of them was Brian Johnson at Philadelphia. 
I, I haven't thought about it, Mom. I haven't. I, I you, there, you're already concept. You're moving on for coaches. Hey, I'm moving on. I'm moving on. <laughs> anyway, I'm just curious as to you, what you thought about him. <laughs> I, they're three and four. My mom's like, okay, we're done here. That's we right. are moving it on. I'm trying to get your opinion because they had five different names, and Brian Johnson, he's with Philadelphia. That kind of intrigued me. Um, yeah, he anyway. is. He is with Philadelphia, and uh, he was once at Mississippi State. I don't know a lot about Brian Johnson other than that. Um, I'll have to, to go back and kind of delve do, into do his some research on him. Yeah, uh, he's an office coordinator, and, and they've been a little unhappy with what's going on right now in Philadelphia. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. All right. Well, I'm just curious. All right. Well, listen, you guys have a great weekend. Now, who do you play? Wake Forest. Wake Forest. Okay. All right. It's, I'll be watching if it's on TV. Yeah, it's on TV, Mom. We're number four team in the country. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, I know that, but, you know, sometimes the other teams aren't so good. I know. I love you, Mom. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> <laughs> love you, too. All right. Good one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You on my mom's side with that one? You take it to Seattle? Uh, uh, I'm just we got it for God's sake in there, which is awesome. Yeah, she's frustrated. And then if there's a website down in Tampa that's putting up a hot board uh, for a coaching candidates, she's on it. She is on she's it. She's on ready it. to go. That one, I don't know. Cleveland's better, but it's the NFL. Neither team is very good, and I Boy. understand I could lose it. I'm betting that Deshaun Watson's not going to play. That's why I'm picking Cleveland, because I don't, if he plays, they're screwed. He's awful. So I would just move it along here. I just um, I didn't really look at the slate really look at it and as you go game by game you know my man's qbr is 39 oh which is what i would rate that one o'clock <laughs> slate on sunday is that's a 39 slate oh, oh that God. entire slate is ass i mean again let's go through this very quickly uh the game sorry i went and looked at i was double checking my number on deshaun i knew it wasn't good all right so here you go the one o'clock slate Rams, Cowboys, Vikings, Green Bay, Atlanta, Tennessee, Jesus, New Orleans, Indianapolis, New England, Miami, Jets, Giants, Jacksonville, Steelers, Philadelphia, Washington, Houston, Carolina. Mm. Laundry. Suspect. Laundry time. Laundry. Suspect. You got the mo you got to mow the lawn, guys? That one o'clock hour is calling you. Probably the last mow before winter. You're good. Get it done. Mm -hmm. Tidy it up. Get you a garage beer and relax. Yep. 2.45, 3 o'clock, check in. See what's close. Now, what are you locking into in the 4 o'clock hour? Because that ain't no beauty. You're going to have what, what? San Francisco and Cincinnati probably is the only one. You don't care about Baltimore, Arizona, Kansas City, Denver? No. Maybe Cleveland, Seattle, I guess. I have never, post Larry Fitzgerald, watched an Arizona game? Yeah, you did. No, no. Meaning... I've never flipped over to an Arizona game and said, oh, this looks interesting. There's something about that building and the lighting in that building. Well, and the history of that franchise, feel, which is just a big steaming pile of garbage. I mean, they've done, they had the one run. It's just not a historically relevant look, franchise. Look, Kansas City wasn't all that. You know that long ago. Oh they were no! A bad for team, a very but, long time, they were a bad. But team. if there but was they a had game, history, at, it, won yeah. the Super Bowl. I mean, if they, it's December and there's a game at Arrowhead, it automatically cool. you feel it through the television. Correct. Arizona is just ugh, the worst. It's up there with I don't even know St. Louis back when the Rams were in St. Louis. Funny they housed the same team at one time. Yeah, that's true. Um, that's true. Your boy here remembers uh, the Comforter that had all of the 28 NFL teams mm -hmm. when I was a kid and. It was the St. Louis Cardinals helmet there. Never made sense for them to move to Arizona. They they were the St. Louis Cardinals. It didn't I don't know why they did that. It still bothers me. I think maybe like they're the West Coast Tennessee. Well, I mean Tennessee's been relevant. No, it's just but it, you you see a game at Tennessee like we go to we go to Nashville and I'm like great. Yeah. Okay. That's style. But I will tell you this: when Derrick Henry was rolling over people like three years in a row. I couldn't he, wait for that highlight. Yeah. That was fun. Especially if you played Jacksonville on a Thursday. Because it was just wrong Here what he did to people. 250 yards. Emasculating. Just so wrong. People flying into the stands. And I never even, I used to, I mean, I'd laugh at the poor bastard who was on the wrong end of that stiff arm, but I would think, man, what, what are you going to do? It's a mountainous man. Eddie George and Derrick Henry. They've had well, a good run for a short-lived franchise yeah, in Nashville. A yard away from winning the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. So it is. We'll wrap it up momentarily. Jeff Cameron, 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chant TV. Warning. 
The following Zaxby's ad may contain messaging upsetting to Philadelphians. Zaxby's took the iconic Philly sandwich, the quote-unquote perfect Philly sandwich, and made it perfecter by putting fried chicken on it. That's right, fried chicken on a Philly. And while Philadelphia might find it offensive, you can find it at your local Zaxby's. Finally, the Philly done right. Woo, saucy, Zaxby's. Excellence defines us. So we'll never let orthopedic pain and injury define you. TOC is a physician-led team of fellowship-trained specialists providing the highest level of orthopedic care in the region. With 12 centers of excellence and TOC Now Urgent Care Clinics, our patients access affordable expert care fast. TOC, only experts. Schedule an appointment at teamtoc.com. Someone who thought texting was a better idea than stopping for a traffic light slams into your rear bumper. Now your back is injured and you've got to be at work and rehab all without a car. I'm Jimmy Facing at Facing Brooks. We hear stories like this every day. You shouldn't pay for someone else's mistake. Call us at 850-777-7777 and we'll make sure you come back stronger. Hi, Taco. Hey, champ. How you doing? How you doing? Pull up a pillow. Haven't seen you in a couple of days. Hey, something's different about you. That's right. My people took me to Tally Spay, the affordable spay and neuter clinic on West Tennessee. Tally Spay? Isn't that the place where they... Yeah, they're a low-cost, high-volume spay neuter clinic. So you're saying you've had some work done? I did. You'd think I'd be depressed, but truth is... I don't even miss them. If anything, I feel more calm. I don't feel like I have to run around looking for company. And my people can leave me alone with the couch cushions. Hey, I can stop anytime I want. Tally Spay, a low-cost, high-volume spay-neuter clinic open to the public, serving Tallahassee and the surrounding areas. Tally Spay. For more information and to schedule a same-day surgery and pickup, go to tallyspay.com. That's tallyspay.com. Tallahassee's biggest, baddest Halloween bash and costume contest is in the Brass Tap in Midtown tomorrow night. And no cover charge. With a costume contest where the first place gets 500 bucks cash. Registration begins at 8, free to enter. Bring your entourage to cheer you on. Tons of spooky specialty cocktails to choose from, like margaritas, zombie genies, and more. Live DJ spinning from 9 p.m. to 1 a.m. The 10th annual biggest, baddest Halloween bash at the Brass Tap in Midtown. With a $500 grand prize for the best costume tomorrow night. The Jeff Cameron Show is a production of the Warchant.com Multimedia Network. Check out Warchant.com today for the latest news inside Florida State Athletics. That's Warchant.com. Now, back to Jeff on Real Talk We will watch them take the field as Ira chimes in and or Corey or both and lets us know who's in uniform, who's warming up, who's ready to go, and who isn't. Yeah, that is the benefit of the road pregame show is it runs right up to kickoff so you get a better idea of who has gone through warm-ups because Florida State does warm up relatively close to kickoff, yeah. more than many other teams. Makes sense to me. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Never liked, like, Warming up, uh, hitting balls 45 minutes before I hit my first ball off yeah. the tee. What the hell's the point of that? It would be akin to go and uh, you know, having lunch after you hit yeah. golf balls. What are we doing here? Was, well, yeah. that was pointless. Absolutely. Uh, also want to thank our friends at Power Mill. Power Mill powering performance, of course, PowerMillSports.com. If your uh, ladder lassie wants to play some softball or baseball, here's your opportunity to get them fundamentally sound so they can get the most out of their abilities, whatever that might be. They'll do all that and more at PowerMillSports.com. Cue it up. It's time for, how you say, with the pitching, uh, probables? It's really the 27th? My God, October's almost over. So that means that next week... 
your mom will not be trailing in the NFL entering November. Maybe. It'll be at oh, the worst, worst, worst case scenario. It'll be tie. Yeah. yeah. D-backs Rangers tonight. Zach Gallen, who didn't figure in the previous series, go figure since he was their best pitcher all season. Nathan Evaldi goes for the Rangers. Good matchup. Game one, World Series tonight. Game two, I'll give you that as well. Since uh, that's all we got. That's all we Slim Pickens. That's all we need. That's all we got. Uh, tomorrow's matchup on the 28th is uh, 8 o'clock. Globe Life Field Time. Merrill Kelly goes for the D-backs. The Rangers, we don't know. We just don't know, everybody. And that's a look at those that shall reside on the bump. Trying to figure out which cold beer in my garage is going to be opened first on this Friday evening. It's a little warm. So so you want to hear the options that I have? My garage beers currently? I've got one in my mind. Okay, well, give me what you think is in my garage fridge. Too hearted. That is a great guess. That is correct. That You nailed that on the nose. I there think if a, it was... There's, there are four remaining of the six-pack that I bought. Too hearted, yes. Okay, I think if it was a different, and by that I mean maybe a dozen degrees cooler this yes, evening. there might be something else. Too hearted would be minus 500, though, still is the first one. It's a delicious oh. beer, Tom. But right now, I think you could probably stand to go elsewhere. Is High Lie another one that's in the Oh, uh, Cigar City is not in the fridge currently. That's okay. a good guess. Good guess. No, It, it is decisively uh, less filling that's in there right now. Okay. So we have a two-hearted. We have four two-hearted to choose from. Mm-hmm. Any one of the four will do. Uh, <laughs> they taste very similar yeah, to each they're other. Very, they're very similar, yeah. Uh, the next uh, few beers over are what? Legacy Lager. The Banquet Beer. Oh, okay. I should have gotten that one. Of course. Yeah. And the snub nose bottle. Mm-hmm. Got to do the right thing. You can't have it in the can. No, the no long necks. Yeah, that's what no, we got sir. there. Yep, that's uh, the legacy beer. I mean, excuse me, the banquet beer. And then what's next to that? I mean, Corona? No, Guinness. Guinness is next to that. There's okay. a bunch of tall boys with the CO2 thingies in there. They got all those right there lined up. Six of them, in fact, they go back. <laughs> you know what's uh, You know what's next to that? Uh, no, I'll go with an old school reference, though. The Fire Rock. I wish you can't find it. You can't oh, find really? it. Oh, I've scoured the earth. You can't find it anymore. It is so aggravating. I'm going to have to order on like Amazon or something. Did they do that? Can you get beer I don't know. Off of so Amazon? a couple of summers ago, I met part of the Kona family. They just happened to be what? up north for a July 4th celebration. North. north. Yeah. For a July 4th celebration. You met people from the island and that yes. make Kona? Yes. Well, what are we doing? How did that not turn into a huge endorsement for Jeff and Tom? Well, come that- on, buddy. They were very busy. Oh, I'm not buying it. <laughs> they were. You didn't make it a priority, sir. I didn't. You need to buck up in those situations and get us paid. That is an amazing opportunity. Plus, it's delicious. We could sell it better than most. And my wife's been to the brewery in Hawaii. Guinness will be first, I think is the answer. I think Guinness might be first. It is Friday. It is not cold, but it is not hot. So on Monday, you said to Sky Ninja, who had contributed to the program, he had a two-part question, mm. I do believe, mm-hmm. Woo! that you would answer eventually. And uh, and I didn't. We got to Friday. We yeah. made it, though. Uh, when would Florida State think about coming off of Trey Benson as its feature back? And you said that is a very fascinating question, and we'll get to that later. I don't think they're going to come off of him at any point because I think they they want listen they really appreciate who the young man is and what he can be on certain Saturdays but there are problems with this offensive line that probably don't make him best suited. He's tried to be very very patient. They don't run downhill and run power and have him hit the hole at mock speed. You know that he just it's sort of a delayed thing and he's not the best for that and that's why we feel very very frustrated with all of this at this point. And we're not very good at it. No. We're, we're not, not a very good run blocking team. No. We're just not. I don't blame him as much, but it it is it's tough for people to watch because they know how violent he can run and how good he can be. The thing that's tough, I'll say very quickly, is we like counter north and south, but they are giving us the whip, mm-hmm. and sometimes you just want them to bounce, but that's a bad habit, so it's tough. By the way, good choice, Noel Dad. Low and brow back in the day. I did have that in the fridge as well. Good work out of you, Tom, and Director Matthew. Be well. Have a great weekend. Peace.